Traveler, what a surprise. I didn't expect to see you here. I bet you didn't waste any time as soon as you heard that Inazuma was organizing a test of courage event, right? Huh? I know you. Hmm? Oh, it, what, what am I doing? Well, obviously I'm here scouting out the place. I've been investigating the area and I've already figured out all the plans for the event. Of course, I can tell you all the details. We're practically family. <laughs> I'm Max Middleman, and this is the Genshin Impact version 3.3 special program. Let's roll the version 3.3 trailer! A friendly word of advice. Test of courage events tend to give rise to a variety of strange rumors and stories. So please, be sure to exercise caution. <laughs> Who goes there? So, is there really a ghost around here? Why does Simon have a feeling that it's staring right at us? Are you talking to me? Jester, I have completed the task you gave me. From this day forth, Balladeer and Kabuki Mono will cease to exist. Did you really think you would be able to see through my plan? Dottore. <laughs> Dottore! In that case, I'll take some time for myself now. Wall and Fury! You dare to gaze upon me?! of your utility does not make you indestructible. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Genshin Impact version 3.3 special program. I'm your host, Sarah Miller-Cruz, the voice of Lumine in Genshin Impact. And today, I'm joined by... Max, the one and only middleman voice of the one and only Arataki Ito. <laughs> And I'm Patrick Pedraza, voice of the Wanderer. But up until now, travelers have only known me as Scaramouche, and everyone's been battling me in the game lately. Yeah, that's true. But to be fair, it's a really cool fight. It's a really cool fight. <laughs> yeah, I know. Anyway, I'm super excited to have the chance to share some upcoming content with everyone. What did you all think about that trailer? Okay, so I definitely saw Erminsoul in there, and I am really excited to find out more about it. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that trailer had everything. It had everything. It had uh, action. It had uh, drama. It was lighthearted in places, but it was dramatic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm just super stoked for everyone to see Scaramouche's, like, backstory. Um, I'm super excited about it, for real. Heck yeah. Well, speaking of that... Following the story's development, Scaramouche is still in Nahida's custody, so I bet the question everyone's wanting to know is how he'll become the Wanderer. Yeah, for sure. And there's quite a story behind that. If you're interested, then be sure to play through the Archon Quest interlude chapter, Inversion of Genesis. There is so much to learn in this quest, so I hope everyone checks it out. Oh come on, man. You can't just leave everyone hanging like that. How about some hints? Come on, please. 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 <laughs> all right, all right. How can yes. I say no to a cute chibi -ido? You can't. Here's a little preview from the quest. We ran into two people at the academia today talking about an essay. Turns out their topic was about the Tatarasuna incident. From what they were saying, it sounded like lots of Tatarasuna's history is still unexplained. And most of the information we have now is just from people filling the gaps with their imagination. 
At least that's what they thought. Well, they guessed right about one thing. Tatara Suna was sabotaged. That oh, was man. Pretty red. <laughs> Wait, why are they talking about Tatara Suna? Hmm, I guess we'll have to see. It is interesting, though, to see the Traveler, Nahida, and Scaramouche all together so peacefully like that. Yeah, yeah, but in this interlude chapter, Nahida will task the Traveler and Paimon with keeping an eye on Scaramouche while we go with him into Ermensoul in search of some information. Oh, interesting. So obviously Nahida must have some reason for deciding to keep Scaramouche around. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. And I'm liking Scaramouche's new style. Ooh, dude's looking sharp. <laughs> Heck yeah, always. No, <laughs> right. <laughs> and at this point, he's known by a completely different name, The Wanderer. I love that name. Okay, so I know I'm not the only one who's curious about what happened. I mean, it looks like he's really changed a lot. Yeah, for sure. But I'm afraid that's all we can show for now. Travelers will have to experience the story for themselves in game. I mean, it's better to explore the storyline without too many spoilers, right? <laughs> true, true. Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, we'll leave the rest for travelers to discover themselves. But the Wanderer is also going to be a new playable character in version 3.3. So let's talk about that. I'm sure many of our viewers are curious about his talents. Heck yeah, sure thing. Let's have a look at the Wanderer in combat. There's no need to exchange pleasantries. It's rather pathetic to force a conversation just to occupy silence. The wind rises. Bow your head! All right, Patrick, you're up. Help introduce the Wanderer for us. Sure thing. The Wanderer is a Catalyst user and has an Animo Vision, so he uses Wind Blades to perform ranged normal attacks. Wait a second, Wind Blades? Not the same as the Traveler's Wind Blade, though. <laughs> okay, okay. So as everyone probably already noticed, the Wanderer can hover in the air when he casts his elemental skill. Upon using his elemental skill, he will first deal AoE damage before leaping into the air and entering a hovering state. So while hovering, the Wanderer's normal and charge attacks will be converted into Kugo Fushudan and Kugu Tofukai, respectively. The damage they deal and their AoE will be increased. Their damage will be considered normal and charge attack damage, respectively. Also, Kugu Tofukai will not consume stamina, and he can remain hovering for a certain duration. Mm, that's so Hi. awesome! He can fly! <laughs> I know, I know, right? But he can't stay hovering forever. While hovering, the Wanderer constantly consumes Kuguryoku points to maintain his hovering state, which is the blue meter you see on the screen. Hmm. Even if he doesn't move or attack, hovering will still consume Kuguryoku points. Okay. So this mechanic works a little differently than our typical stamina meter. There are many possible actions the Wanderer can perform while hovering in the air, which all rely on Kuguryoku points rather than stamina. So, for example, sprinting mid-air will consume additional Kuguryoku points to accelerate mid-air, and holding the sprint button will cause persistent point consumption to maintain speed. So, this effect will replace his default sprint. Jumping expends extra Kuguryoku points to increase hovering height. Holding jump will cause persistent Kuguryoku point consumption to keep increasing hovering height. Of course, running out of points will end his hovering state. Oh, okay, so travelers will need to plan their actions while hovering. Exactly. So with his talent, Jade Claim Flower, when casting his elemental skill, if it contacts Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, or Electro, that instance of the skill will receive a corresponding buff effect depending on which element was contacted. Mm -hmm. uh, so for example, increasing his Kuguryoku points cap, attack, crit rate, or restoring a set amount of energy upon hitting opponents with a normal or charged attack. The Wanderer can have up to two different kinds of these buffs simultaneously. Ooh. Oh, look, 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 check that out. Part of the halo behind him changes color depending on the buffs you get so travelers will be able to easily understand what effects the Wanderer currently has. I like that. 
It's helpful and still looks really cool. Yeah. <laughs> so after unlocking another talent, Gales of Reverie, when the Wanderer is in the hovering state, if his normal or charge attack hits an enemy, there is a set chance to gain another buff effect, allowing him to sprint midair without consuming Kugaryoku points. Additionally, this buff effect will fire wind arrows to attack the enemy. Ooh. Oh, dope. I'm sure extra buff effects like that will go a long way for players when they're in combat. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And if you've noticed, there is a colorful aura of light around his body to indicate when that buff effect is triggered. I saw that. That's pretty cool. I love all the detail they put into the Wanderer. All right, this brings us to the Wanderer's elemental burst. Sweet. Yay. So check this out. Upon unleashing his burst, he compresses the atmosphere and stomps it down toward the enemy. <laughs> so travelers should note that if the Wanderer is in a hovering state when he unleashes his burst, then the hovering state will end and he will begin descending after the burst is completed. Okay, this stomping animation is a little aggressive. Yeah, but it's cool. <laughs> I know, and it actually suits his character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't help but agree. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Let's not forget about the exploration talent. Ah, yes. This is an interesting one. The Wanderer can decrease the mora required when ascending bows and catalysts. Hey, now. You can never complain about saving mora. <laughs> Am I right? Okay, huh? that's true. All right. Now that we've seen the Wanderer, let's move on to the next new character. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> what did you say? I'm old now, so every other phrase escapes my ears. Try calling me Madam Farozan, and I'll see if I can pick that up. Hmm. What is it that you would like to learn more about? Different forms of pressure-based puzzle mechanisms? The base layer design of elemental monuments? Huh. Wait. Did you forget to call me Madam Burrows on just now when you asked your question? Whoa! What? What? There's nothing wrong with being afraid of thunder, even at an older age. Oh, oh she gosh. sounds sassy. Yeah, I know. and smart too. <laughs> she seems so awesome. She's fun. I wonder what her skirts mean. I know, her design is so cool and really detailed. I love it. So, even though she looks super young, she's actually an old person? Like, where's my teeth? <laughs> well, she's not that old. Oh, yeah, right. Not old man. <laughs> Farazan's age is probably still nothing compared to Scaramouche. <laughs> mm hmm. But let's call him the Wanderer, Sarah. Please. Okay, you know who I meant. Actually, now that I think about it, Yokai can also live a really long time, too. That's right, yeah, no, and speaking of age, isn't the traveler's age also kind of mysterious? Mm-hmm, that's true. It looks like all of our characters are intriguing, but it's safe to say that Farazan is way older than most people in Tavat. Farazan works in the Academia's Haravatat Darshan and has been a hairbod, which roughly means mentor for over a century. So I bet everyone out there is wondering if she's also some kind of creature blessed with long life, you know, like Klee? No, she's actually just your regular, typical human being. Oh. Well, maybe not so typical. Hmm. About a hundred years ago, Faruzan was an undisputed genius, traveling all around Sumeru and solving many puzzles and mysteries. The notes she left behind eventually became the basis of mechanical research for later generations. Whoa, she sounds pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but later, she accidentally stumbled into some ruins while trying to solve a puzzle. There, she encountered some strange phenomenon which stopped her from aging and was trapped there for nearly a hundred years. Ooh. She eventually solved the puzzle and was able to finally return to Sumeru. Hmm. Can you imagine being trapped in a puzzle for 100 years? Mm -mm. Wait, wait, wait. So that's how she's been a uh, hair bod for over a century? Yeah. And even now, she still has the pride of a scholar in her heart and is a very talented person. It's just that after being separated from the world for so long, she's kind of fallen behind the times now. Oh, hey, I get what you mean. She was once a proud researcher in a niche field that has become unpopular after 100 years. So is she still completely dedicated to her field? Yep, and she often tries using her old age as a means of drumming up support for her ideas. 
However, I think she'd prefer to be complained about for using her seniority rather than garnering sympathy for her experience of being trapped in the ruins. Yeah, sounds like she's quite the character. <laughs> I know, right? Okay, so now that we've covered her backstory, why don't we take a look at Faruzan's abilities in combat? Let's do it. Fight, 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 fight. <laughs> <laughs> a hundred years have passed, yet there hasn't been any change to those dumb rules at the academia. Dare to mess with me? Have fun with this gift! I love all the geometric shapes when she's playing. Did you guys see that? Yes, that there's so much geometry, and I took geometry. It looks so cool. Oh, uh, yeah. So, Farzan is an animo character, and she wields a bow as her weapon. Her normal attacks are the usual bow attacks you'd expect from a bow user, so there's not too much to say about that. But her skills are where things get interesting. Her elemental skill deploys a polyhedron that deals damage to enemies, after using her skill, her next aimed shot will become a special attack that creates a vortex, pulling nearby objects and opponents in. Oh, nice. So she can clump enemies together. And there's also another thing about her special charged attack. It will create a vortex effect at its point of impact. And if the attack hits an enemy or ally member, it'll apply a mark and create a vortex after a short delay. Okay, okay, okay. So it looks like there will be a lot of potential uses for this attack. Travelers will have to experiment with it and see what they come up with. Yeah, I think it'd be amazing to try hitting teammates with the arrow in co-op mode and have them charge into the enemies to group them all together. I'll have to see who wants to try that with me. <laughs> <laughs> After unlocking the talent Impetuous Flow, the time required for fully charging Farozan's next shot will be reduced, and the arrow will reduce the target enemy's animo resistance. In her elemental burst, she deploys a dazzling polyhedron and releases a whirlwind pulse. Throughout its duration, the dazzling polyhedron will continuously move along a triangular path. Once it reaches each corner of that triangular path, it will unleash one more whirlwind pulse. Yeah, one minute she's here, the next she's polygon for a hundred years! Bada boom! Even Sino's jokes are funnier than that. <laughs> it was pretty all right, funny. All right, all right, all right, all right. Anyway, let's hear what effects these whirlwind pulses have. Sure. When the whirlwind pulse hits opponents, it will decrease their animo resistance. It will also apply an animo damage buff effect to all nearby party members when it's unleashed. Travelers should note that the effective range of this buff is quite large, and it's not just within the whirlwind pulse itself, so there's no need to go chasing the polyhedron. <laughs> After unlocking her talent, Lost Wisdom of the Seven Caverns, when a team member uses normal charged or plunging attacks, elemental skills, or elemental bursts to deal animo damage to an enemy, the damage will increase based on Farazan's base attack. This effect can only be triggered once for a certain duration of time. Oh, so it seems she'll be the solid support. Yeah. Totally. And as a researcher of mechanics and puzzles, Farazan has taken it upon herself to explore many ruins with her travels taking her all across Sumeru. Her exploration talent reflects this, and she gains more rewards when dispatched on a Sumeru expedition for 20 hours. I'm sure no other mentor in Haravatat has 100 years of experience in solving puzzles. Yeah, I gotta say, that's pretty hard to beat. Mm -hmm. So, the big question is, when can travelers expect to get these new characters? That is a good question. Let's talk about the upcoming event wishes. In the early part of version 3.3, the Wanderer and Arataki Ito will be available via their own event wishes. Farazan will also be making her debut in these event wishes. In the later part of version 3.3, we'll be seeing rerun event wishes for both the Raiden Shogun and Kamisato Ayato. And last but not least, the new five-star catalyst, Tule Tula's Remembrance, will be appearing in a new weapon event wish. And that's not all. In version 3.3, two brand new artifact series will become available, so travelers should be sure to check out the corresponding domain. Woo, more Woo artifacts! All right. <laughs> I hope travelers will have fun experimenting and trying new combinations with these. Yeah. Welcome back to the version 3.3 special program. Okay, Patrick, what do we have next? So next, we'll be covering the upcoming events for the new version. That's right, we've already mentioned the Test of Courage event, and I'm sure plenty of you were wondering about that, so let's start there. Aha! Uh -huh. 
you must be here to participate in the test of courage. I can already see a dark aura surrounding the two of you. If you carelessly go running into the event, all it'll take is one little misstep, and the darkness will swallow you up. <laughs> Some strange and unusual things may occur along the way. If you ever feel you can't handle it, you may withdraw from the event at any time. This is your last chance. I'll count it down. Three, two, one. Welcome to the test of courage. Enter at your own risk. Uh, that was pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is a test of courage, so I'm sure there'll be some scary stuff going on there. I ain't scared. Anyway, to successfully clear this event, we'll be facing a series of little tests. Ooh, what's this? Tests, you say? Yes, that's right. <laughs> Word has it that if you walk around the test of courage, you might find yourself encountering a special sort of game. We've already got the rules down, so I'll do a quick introduction. Basically, travelers will have to control a bouncing bar to bounce a ball and use skill ball effects to break as many bricks as possible. Okay, I'm liking this one. Seems pretty straightforward. During the game, travelers will be able to trigger elemental reactions to break bricks more effectively. <laughs> nice! It even has elemental reactions. Yeah! We can control the character to move the bar. When the character we're using is either Pyro, Hydro, Cryo, or Electro, the corresponding element will be applied to the bar. By switching characters, you can change the element of the bar. Okay, all the pieces are falling in place now. The bar can infuse a certain element, and the blocks also have their own elements. So causing a skill ball of one element to hit blocks of different elements will trigger elemental reactions. There, how'd I do? Yep, you nailed it. The bar will add the element corresponding to your character. Besides triggering reactions the way you just mentioned, if a skill ball is already infused by an element and it hits the bar, it will also trigger a reaction, causing the skill ball to have some additional effects. When preparing your team, you can equip modifiers to receive various buff effects, which will help you successfully clear the challenge. Oh, nice. Also, when there are less than a certain amount of bricks on the board and the ball lands another hit, the bar will unleash fireworks. Whoa, cool. Yeah. Travelers can utilize this effect to break some bricks that would normally be difficult to hit directly. It's like a bonus attack. Oh, <laughs> yeah. sweet. So travelers will need to select characters of the right elements, equip the appropriate modifiers, and use different elemental reactions to break bricks and score more points. And then travelers will be able to use their points to exchange for rewards in the event shop, correct? That's right. Also, travelers will have the option of teaming up and playing the event together in co-op mode. Oh, looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, super fun. Yeah, in addition to this minigame, the Test of Courage storyline will also contain more challenges. Travelers will even have a chance to meet with some good friends again, so be sure to check out this new event. All right, let's move on to our next event. Okay, so next up, we have a race event called Across the Wilderness. Your objective Collecting balloons. Ooh. I don't know. Seems like the Wanderer's abilities might come in real handy here. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so, in this event, each stage will have wilderness balloons scattered all around. Travelers will need to find as many wilderness balloons as possible within the time limit to earn increasingly better rewards. So, during the challenge, travelers will be able to utilize their character's skills and talents. So, it'll be important to assemble the right team depending on the traits and terrain of the challenge area. Oh, oh interesting. interesting. Yeah, so travelers can also use something called the Wilderness Compass to obtain various buffs, which include enhanced jumping capabilities, increased movement speed, or unlimited stamina, etc. Ooh, cool. However, you can only claim one buff during each challenge. You must consume blessed energy to use the compass and gain the selected buff. You may charge the compass up by finding wilderness balloons or interacting with blessed energy in the challenge. Or you can always wait for the compass to passively charge over time. Yo, this event looks pretty crazy. It's almost like watching parkour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are two different kinds of wilderness balloons in these challenges. The first is harvest balloons, which will increase the overall progress of your search for wilderness balloons. The other kind is sonar balloons, which will cause several harvest balloons to appear around you for a set amount of time. That's awesome. 
So there will be five stages available for this event and travelers will need to consider the conditions and terrain of each stage to come up with the best way to complete it. Also, travelers may team up in co-op mode for challenges. Ooh, more chances to play together. I love it. Yeah, same. Okay, let's move on to our next event. Everyone's favorite game of hide and seek is back with the Wind Trace event. And of course, this is going to be another co-op event, and I for one am super excited for it. Cool. There's nothing like a good co-op. Uh, many of you might already be familiar with this event by now, but there have been a few changes. Let me introduce what travelers can expect to see this time around. We can probably skip some of the basics this time. You know, players either hide or seek. And then... Okay, wait a second. Uh -oh. There actually might be some new travelers out there who've never seen this event before. Ah. So why don't you start with some of the basics? Right, good point. Okay, uh, let's start at the beginning then. This is a game with a long history in Mondstadt. Travelers will be split into two different sides, the Rebels and the Hunter. You will need to use skills and master the art of hiding or chasing down others to win this event. The goal of the hunter is to capture all the rebels, while the rebels run or use other means to keep themselves from getting caught by the hunter. Okay, that's straightforward enough. So what else you got for us? Well, some travelers may remember playing as the rebels and getting caught early in the game. Once that would happen, all you could do was spectate and watch the rest as the others continue playing. But this time around, once you're caught, you'll still be able to participate in the match even in observer mode. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Once you're in observer mode, you can't be seen by other players and will receive the illusory beacon skill. This skill will allow you to place a random beacon to confuse the hunter. If your beacon successfully tricks the hunter and is destroyed, then the hunter will suffer an obscured vision effect. So even after you've been captured, you can be like a little ghost trying to help your teammates by disrupting the hunter. Yeah. That's pretty fun. And at least you won't have to sit there and just watch the rest of the match anymore. Exactly, but what does the hunter get this time? I mean, we gotta keep it fair. Some new Windward Arts have been added for both the hunter and the rebels. The hunter will now be able to use the hunter's net. This net can be thrown and will remove any rebel disguises within its range and will notify the hunter that a rebel was detected. If a beacon is caught in the net, it will be destroyed and the hunter will not suffer from obscured vision. Nice. So I guess if you love playing Hunter, you'll probably love this. Oh yeah, you definitely should. <laughs> the skill Rebels used in previous versions of the game to place beacons can now only be used by players in Observer mode. However, the Rebels will be able to use an all new Concealing Beacon skill. This skill will allow you to deploy a beacon for a set duration and remain invisible while you're around that beacon. All players, including your rebel teammates, will be unable to see you while you're invisible. If the concealing beacon is destroyed by the hunter, then the hunter will have their vision obscured for a short time. Sounds pretty fun, huh? Yeah. Yeah, so even if you end up being captured by the hunter at the start of the game, you'll still be able to participate and assist your teammates. And did I mention primo gems and other rewards? Ah, the good stuff. So be <laughs> sure to check it out. Oh, that's awesome. Seriously, I can't wait to play with friends. Okay, our next event is a combat-based event. Time for some combat! Whoop, whoop. In a forbidden place warded by dust and sand, mysterious foes have assembled lines of fortifications to stop your coming. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, a new edition of Misty Dungeon will arrive in version 3.3. Stoked. Sweet. But this time around, there will be a total of seven trials with different themes awaiting you in the Misty Dungeon. Each has a different ley line disorder, and travelers will have to adjust their teams according to the disorder's effects and the distribution of enemies. There will also be trial characters for you to select from as well. After entering the domain, travelers will need to go and complete three challenges to collect ancient runes. After collecting power from three ancient runes, we can power up the control array and proceed to the final challenge. Also, throughout the trial, additional benediction mechanisms and challenges will appear. Travelers may choose to interact with these to increase the leyline disorder's effects or revive and heal your team. You know, if it were up to me, I'd say just go for all the challenges. <laughs> I know, but travelers should keep in mind that the challenge objective for each trial might be different so be sure to check the objective and aim for that while proceeding. 
In terms of rewards, travelers can look forward to winning Primo Gems and other various prizes. Yes. Ooh, I like prizes. And last but not least, version 3.3 will also have Leyline Overflow events. Travelers can look forward to saving their resin and earning more Mora and Experience books. Nice, that's awesome. Uh, that'll be great for all the travelers out there still leveling up all their new characters. And even if you don't need those resources now, it's always good to stock up and have more on hand, am I right? Yeah. So, travelers looking to upgrade their characters won't want to miss this. Yeah, I mean, this is all good stuff. In addition to the new version's limited time events, version 3.3 will also be adding a new permanent game mode called Genius Invocation TCG. Genius Invocation TCG! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. During our journey into VAT, we've stumbled across several NPCs talking about a game called Genius Invocation TCG. So next, we'll introduce this card game that's been taking to VAT by storm. In the version 3.1 special program, we already revealed that Genius Invocation TCG will be a card game where we can challenge various characters and NPCs or battle against your friends. But there is actually a legend behind this game. Ooh. It is said that a young guy in Sumeru found an ancient casket of tomes in the attic. He opened it and discovered that the soul of an ancient TCG player called the Crocodile King had been captured inside. <laughs> what a name! It turns out that the Crocodile King was King Deshret's viceroy, who battled an opponent named the Ibis King. Huh. During the match, the Crocodile King fell prey to his opponent's scheme and was sealed away in the casket of tomes. <laughs> Ouch, game over. After being unexpectedly released by the kid, the Crocodile King possesses him and helps him to gradually climb the ranks to becoming a legendary TCG player. <laughs> nice. Hang on, is it just me or does that kind of sound like the plot to a light novel or something? <laughs> You're right. It turns out that Yai Publishing House is about to release a hit light novel series based on Genius Invocation TCG. Okay, now this is starting to sound like a plug for Yai Publishing House. <laughs> Maybe. But anyway, that's the legend on how Genius Invocation TCG came to be. Though it's probably just a story they came up with for marketing the game. So while you were telling us about the story, I was over here researching the rules to the game. Basically, Genius Invocation TCG is a game where you use a constructed deck of cards to duel against an opponent. The objective is to defeat all of your opponent's character cards. That's right. Also, there are many features and mechanics in the game that resonate with Genshin Impact's gameplay, so it shouldn't be too hard for players to get the hang of. Right, I even saw some elemental reactions in the gameplay. Yup, a constructed deck must contain character cards, and as you might expect, these character cards have a normal attack, an elemental skill, and an elemental burst. <sighs> so when a character card <laughs> deals elemental damage to an enemy, it will cause them to be affected by that element. Then, you can switch to a character card of a different element and use their abilities to trigger an elemental reaction. Wait, did you guys notice that there are even monster character cards? Can we even make a deck of, like, just the monsters from the game? <laughs> You're really getting into this, Max. Heck <laughs> yeah, I am! <laughs> I like card games! Who doesn't? <laughs> so, in Genius Invocation TCG, all actions require you to spend elemental dice. Each round, both you and your opponent will roll eight elemental dice. Each of these elemental dice can have any one of eight elemental attributes. Hold on, but there's only seven elements in the world of Tevat. You're right. So, in addition to the seven standard elements, there's also one called the Omni Element. The elemental dice required for a character card to perform an action correspond to the character's element. So, for example, a Pyro character like Diluc needs either Pyro or Omni Elemental Dice to perform an action. Clear now? Yep, crystal clear. Also, Elemental Dice can be used to switch characters or play a variety of other cards, such as equipment cards, event cards, and support cards. All these cards create the potential for a variety of strategies. Right. While playing Genius Invocation TCG, travelers can earn player experience, which will increase your player level. As your level increases, you'll be able to challenge more characters and NPCs. By completing challenges, you may earn lucky coins, new cards, or other rewards. Lucky coins can be exchanged in the event shop for cards, 
or can even unlock dynamic skins for certain cards. Dynamic skins? Th those are cards that have moving illustrations, right? That's right. All character cards can unlock a dynamic skin. After unlocking that, there'll even be a cool bonus animation whenever you cast that character's elemental burst. Cool. And if you're confident in your TCG skills, you can also invite a friend to duel. After reaching a high enough player level, you'll even unlock a matchmaking mode. So be sure to give it a try. Travelers should note that playing against your friends or other travelers won't count towards any leaderboards or provide any rewards. So you can relax. It's all just for fun. <sighs> <laughs> OK, that's everything we have for Genius Invocation TCG. And that brings us to the end of today's special program. Aww. So, what did you think? Why do I, is it have to be over? There's so much <laughs> that this version has to offer. Yeah, I can't even take it all in right now. I'm just <laughs> super stoked to be part of this. I think I just gained some Kugurioku points just doing this whole thing, so. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the, the new characters look cool. I know, what about Scaramouche hovering? <laughs> like, that's insane. I know, that's awesome. That's super dope. <laughs> that's awesome, and I cannot wait to play in some of these events and mini games. I'm super excited. <laughs> this was so fun. I'm really glad that we got to do the special program together. I'm so happy I got to come back for another special program. This is my third time being on one of these and I can't wait for number four. I'm counting. I'm so happy. This is my first one. So thank you for having me. Yay! Um, doesn't it feel good? Yes. Doesn't it feel, feel good to feel to special? Seriously, I'm just do you like... feel special? <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I think this is the end of our special program. So I hope everyone enjoyed it and we'll see you in game. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay, bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.